Welcome back. Now we're going to discuss McDonald's monopoly. And although that might seem pretty silly to you, in fact, this is going to illustrate a very important concept in bargaining. So if you've never seen McDonald's monopoly before, it works something like this. Various McDonald's monopoly game pieces are attached to food and drinks. These are essentially tiny little property deeds that come from the monopoly board game and you can buy drinks and buy food and there'll be a couple of them attached to the the drinks and the food and you peel them off and you see which ones you actually got in those in those packets so if you collect all the properties from the same color group you end up winning a prize and the grand prize is one million dollars if you collect park place and boardwalk However, there's a trick here. It's not so easy to collect a park place and a boardwalk piece and win that million dollars. The rarity of each property varies greatly. There are essentially millions and millions of park place pieces out there, but only a single boardwalk. I don't know exactly how many park, park place pieces there are, but it's essentially a ridiculous number. And yet there's only a single boardwalk. So if you want to win the million dollars, you have to obtain the boardwalk piece. It's very easy to get a park place piece, very difficult to get a boardwalk piece. And it's worth noting here as a side note that for a long time, the company that was in charge of producing these McDonald's Monopoly pieces actually had a very shady guy who was stealing the boardwalk piece during its manufacture and distributing it to his friends. So for a while in McDonald's Monopoly, it was this dude's friends who were winning the million dollars and those dude's friends alone. He eventually got caught, though. So now it's actually possible for you to get the boardwalk piece and win, assuming that there isn't another guy out there doing the same thing. Regardless of that side note, I want to ask a question here. Assume that there's no collusion between all of those Park Place players. So essentially, you can't get all of those Park Place players together and gather all of their pieces and essentially become one individual that has all of the Park Place pieces. And that's a reasonable thing to assume because there are so many Park Place pieces out there, it's going to be very hard to collude in that manner anyway. Okay, so assuming that's the case, how much does a boardwalk holder have to pay for a park place piece? Let's assume that I got that single boardwalk piece and I can't go out and get another park place piece from McDonald's because it's, you know maybe they're all gone now and all of those park place pieces are in the hands of a bunch of different individuals. So now I have to go purchase a park place piece from one of those holders of park place. How much am I going to have to pay them in order to get one of those pieces? Well, the answer, if you want to go ahead and write this down, perhaps as a guess in the comment section, go ahead and do that. But if you are ready to see the answer, the answer is zero dollars. And that might strike you as being weird. That's like, oh, whoa, wait a minute. The Park Place pieces are actually completely worthless. What do you mean? Well, yes, they are completely worthless. And here's why. Imagine that the Park Place piece sells for some positive amount. So essentially, we're going to prove that it's going to go for zero dollars by showing that it's not going to go for any more than that. Well, we can represent that dollar amount as X dollars. So assume that Park Place is selling for not zero dollars. It's selling some for some positive amount. We're going to call that amount X dollars. Now, notice that there's a single Park Place person out there who's actually making the sale and getting some profit here. Every single other Park Place holder is receiving no money whatsoever. So if you don't match up your Park Place, if you're a Park Place holder, if you don't match up your Park Place with that boardwalk, your park places become completely worthless because there's just a single boardwalk out there that matches with it to get a million dollars. So park place pieces are completely irrelevant unless they have a boardwalk piece to match them. So anyone who's not selling that park place piece is receiving zero dollars. But this allows that boardwalk owner to then leverage that weakness of all the other park place players against the one guy who is planning on selling it for a positive amount. So if I were going to be selling it for a positive amount to the boardwalk guy, if I were perhaps getting $2 from him to have him buy my park place piece, then there's another guy out there who could undercut me right? Because he's going to receive no money otherwise. So you'd be thinking to himself, well, I could just cut it in price, cut that price in half. Instead of selling it for $2, I could offer that boardwalk owner $1 instead. And that boardwalk owner would rather take my piece because it's going to be sold at a cheaper price. And that's better for me because now I'm receiving $1 instead of receiving nothing. But then that logic just keeps working its way down further and further and further. It can't be 50 cents because then I could cut it down to 25 cents and it can't be 25 cents because I cut it down to like 10 cents. It can't be 10 cents because I cut it down to 5 cents or 2 cents or 1 cent and so forth. So you just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. It can't sell for a positive amount. Now, there are practical considerations here. So if Park Place were to sell for some money, it's not going to be because there's actual inherent value in the Park Place piece that we just discussed. Perhaps the seller needs to be gaining some sort of minimal amount uh, because the boardwalk player is willing to pay some sort of convenience premium to 
purchase the first park place that he can find. And if he doesn't purchase that one, there's going to be some sort of delay and he's going to have to wait for uh, a while to find another uh, park place owner and buy it from him. So maybe the park place owner will actually get some sort of slight amount of money to cover for that convenience premium. Or alternatively, perhaps the park place player needs to actually sell it and like put it in an envelope and mail it to the boardwalk owner, in which case he's going to have to be compensated for the postage and that sort of inconvenience to the park place owner. However, what we're seeing here is that the park place piece itself is not valuable. It's just the convenience or the cost associated with transporting the park place piece, which actually makes the park place piece sell for anything more than $0. So the actual value of park place is $0. Anything else is coming from something unrelated to park place in particular. It's something indirectly related to the game. It's like that convenience or the ability to find it, right? So park place itself, completely worthless. Now, you'll notice here we made an important assumption. Again, assumptions are always very important. Assumptions drive our results, and we should always be looking at the assumptions and seeing, well, does this make sense or not? So in this case, we were looking at a situation where there was no collusion between the park place owners. And that was that was reasonable because there's so many out there, it's going to be very difficult for the park place, park place players to collude in that manner. However, there is a lot of incentive for the park place owners to be able to collude if they could. If they had some sort of way of gathering all those park place players together in the same room, then at that point, they'd really want to collude. And the reason for this should be obvious, because if they don't collude, then the sale price ends up being zero dollars and so those park place owners don't receive anything whatsoever so it's going to be really neat or really good for the park place owners to be able to collude and use their collective bargaining leverage against that boardwalk owner to drive concessions out of that boardwalk guy and so while that might not be very possible here with park place because there's so many of them and they're all interspersed all over the country this is going to be actually reasonable in a different situation, in a slightly different situation. So we're going to wrap up here talking about McDonald's Monopoly. And in the next section, we're going to transfer or transition into the De Beers Diamonds Monopoly, where De Beers actually did something like this when they went around and purchased all of these sorts of things and, and tried to collude with the, the diamond manufacturing industry to create a situation where they could actually receive a lot of profit. So we're going to see how that worked in the next section. Join me then.